Hey folks, so I wanted to give you this wee video to show you a little bit about the link between linear velocity and angular velocity. Now, I'm going to show you this with a hamster wheel, but you can, of course, do this with any kind of moving object in a circular motion. But first of all, let's think about the hamster wheel. So obviously the hamster would climb on into the wheel and they would start kind of paddling along and that would make the wheel spin round like this, okay? Um, unfortunately, my little hamster is still in bed, so we're going to leave her to sleep just now. But if she wakes up, I'll try and get a video for you guys. So the key thing here is, if we think about it, if the hamster wheel wasn't there and the hamster was running along, she would actually be going along in a linear motion because she'd be running across the way like this. OK, so how does that ap apply to the situation here then? Well, if she's running along this way, but the wheel is actually spinning round, that means the linear velocity must be connected to the angular velocity. And you can see that when I do this with my fingers, because I'm just pushing this along sort of in one direction. OK, you could imagine my finger is like the hamster, it's pushing it along this way like that. And as it does that, it's imparting a sort of a kinetic energy to make this spin round. OK, so that tells you that there is a link between the linear and the angular velocity. OK, and in fact, the linear velocity is a tangential velocity because I only need to make contact at one point in order to make this spin round. OK, so that's how we can say that linear and angular velocity are actually linked together. It's also, if you think about it, why if you're riding on a bicycle, your bicycle wheels go round the way but you're actually traveling in a straight line. Again, it's because that angular velocity has a linear tangential velocity. Okay, thanks for watching folks, and I'll try and get your wee update with the hamster on the wheel next.